Hello, this is Untwist Your Stitches, my floss tube channel about cross stitching and all my other crafting endeavors. I'm Rose and this is floss tube number 10. I'm coming to you on April 23rd and this is just a few days before the local retreat that I will be attending um, this year in Central California. Um, I've got a few things that I want to tell you. I've got some fully finishes. I've got some whips, um, a little bit of haul, and some other floss tube channels that I would like to mention. Just in case you're new to floss tube and haven't heard about a few of these, they are worth checking out. So let's get started for today. I'm going to start my episode off with, um, I guess you could call it a little bit of a rant. Um, I have been watching a few floss tubers and they are saying that they are getting very negative, very disrespectful comments about themselves personally and also some of the work that they are doing. Now, me personally, I have not received any of this negativity yet. Maybe I'm not got enough viewers. Oh my gosh, what's going on with my hair? Anyway, um, maybe I don't have enough viewers yet. Maybe they just don't think um, my content is important enough to have these comments um, on. But here is my take on what is going on. I have found the majority, say 95% of this community, community to be helpful, supportive, encouraging, um, willing to go that extra mile for their fellow stitchers. So if there are a very few people percent of people that are out there that are making negative comments that are being disrespectful. I feel sorry for those people because it's not about the people making the videos. It's more about the people that just have to come on and for whatever reason, maybe they're having a bad day. Maybe they're just a negative person, but whatever it is, they're coming on and they're saying these things. I know of at least one floss tuber who is not going to be doing any more content because of the negativity that she has gotten, and that is the Vintage Stitcher. She has been bombarded by just people being nasty for no reason, and I don't understand it. Another floss tuber is getting comments about her personal appearance. That's not why we're on. We're not on here as a beauty channel. We're not on here as a fashion channel. We're on here to show you our stitching projects, our ideas, maybe inspire you to do some new projects, some different projects that you've never seen to encourage you to just pick that needle up and do something. So, Please, people, please do not make this a negative place. Make this, there's enough negativity out there. We don't need any more of it. If you don't have something nice to say about a person, please don't, re don't say it. There are hundreds and hundreds of channels out there. If you don't find one person appealing, if you don't like their content, if you... You know, maybe their voice you don't like, maybe the way they style their hair, whatever it is. If you don't like it, don't make the negative comments. Move on. Find something different. You know, we've always been told if you can't say something nice, don't say anything at all. And that is so, so true on the Internet because... This anonymity that people feel that they have and that they can make these comments and that they can say anything that they please 
it's just not the place for it on a channel about a fun hobby that people are out there trying to encourage each other with. So please, if I get any, first thing I'm going to do is delete it. And if I can, I'll block that person from my channel. I don't know if that's something that YouTube allows or not, but I'm not going to I'm not going to keep it there. I'm not going to look at that. We are, and I find it with everybody, we are our own biggest critics. You don't have to come on and tell us more negative things. So please just be kind to each other and come into these channels with an open mind. Don't judge the person by their looks. Just enjoy the content that they're trying to bring to you and the things that they're trying to show you. So having said that, I'll get off my little soapbox now and we'll go back to a regular scheduled program. <laughs> so when I first started doing my floss tube channel, I thought I would always start out with a funny story about myself and my stitching and um, how I got into it or a particular project that I had done and a funny story about that or whatever. Well, I'm finding it harder and harder to come up with those things. Maybe my brain just isn't working and I'll come back with a few things and jot them down and those will be in different uh, videos. But what I have decided to do now is to come out with uh, the first section of my program which is going to be called Who, What, Where, When, or Why. And it's not intended to be negative. I just got done saying that, right? <laughs> but it's just a fun way of telling each other different things of we like, we don't like, new people that we should be looking at as far as designers maybe or whatever but it's gonna this section is gonna be called from now on who what where when or why and today is why and my question today is um why do you cross stitch what is it about cross stitching that makes you want to do it is it because it gives you this notion of creativity? Is it a relaxation thing? You want to just unwind. You don't want to have to overthink. You don't want to have to um, worry. Um, is it just to keep your hands busy? You know, for me, for a long time, it I did it either cross-stitch or crochet, because if I would sit down to watch a TV program within the first five minutes, if my hands weren't busy, I was falling asleep and I wouldn't finish whatever program it was I was watching. Um, it Could it be that, you know, you're doing it because you want to give your friends and your family a handmade gift? something special for them, something that really makes them think, hey, I was thinking about you and I did this for you specifically. Or are you just trying to fill your own space, make your house more enjoyable to look around, fill those walls, um, make little pillows? What is it and it doesn't have to be just one thing. It can be a combination of all because all of these things that I've told you to keep me busy, to be um, for relaxation, for gifts, for my own home, all of those things, those are the reasons why I particularly like to do cross stitch. It, hmm, there's noise outside. Um, that's why I do it. I do it for the creativity, for the relaxation, for the joy of gifting and all of that. So tell me a little bit in the comments um, why it is that you do stitching. And some of, some of them I'll um, read off in my next um, video and let y'all know um, what the majority seem to be saying about why it is that they cross stitch. So that is my new section. 
And it's also just to get, you know, a conversation going, just to to reach out to the community that um, I am filming for and saying, hey, what you up to, you know, let's get to know each other. The next section that I do is my FOs and my FFOs. And if you're new to cross stitching, FO is fully finished, which means you've done all of the stitching, um, all of the beading, all of that kind of stuff. And FFO is fully, finally fully finished, which means you have created it into, it's either been framed or it's become a pillow or, you know, whatever it is, your final thing that you did to, so that you can display your, your, um, finish. I have one and <laughs> it kind of falls into a lot of the sections that I do. It was a new start. It was obviously a whip because I worked on it and it was a fully finish. Plus it was a fully, fully finished or whatever, finally fully finished or completely fully finished, however you want to say it. It is a gift for a friend. Um, we are moving at the end of May and we'll no longer be in this area. And this particular person has been friends with us since we, since we first uh, moved to California, which was 30 years ago. And also it is her birthday. So we are going to see her and her husband and have dinner with them one last time before we are on our way. And I wanted to give her a special um, parting gift, birthday gift, friendship gift, whatever it is. So this is the fully finished piece that I did. Um, the fabric is 16 count heritage, uh, ivory. The, the pattern that I did, I'm sorry, I can't give you a picture of it. I looked and looked and looked online and I cannot find a picture of this pattern. It was a free pattern from Passion Rakama. Um, it's an Italian online, uh, designer. This was her spring. There's four of these. There's spring, summer, fall, and winter. And each one of them has a heart. And then the, the design inside reflects the, the seasons. This one was supposed to say where it says friends up here. It was supposed to say spring. And then the, the near or far, I just added that in as um, a sentiment for the friend that I am making this for. The back is finished with um, some fabric I had in my stash. I thought it um, went well with the, the front of the design. This is, again... Um, I got these hoops from um, Amazon and um, it's a metal hoop and it comes with the stand and um, I found it in the wedding section. It, it was when I was scrolling one day. Um, I don't remember what I was looking for, but this popped up as an option. And when I was looking at it, I thought, oh, this would make a wonderful way of finishing some of my cross stitch. Uh, you've seen this same type of finishing once before in one of my earlier videos. Uh, the, the butterflies were from Michael's. No, Hobby Lobby. I got it at Hobby Lobby and the, the raspberries were also at Hobby Lobby. And then I had these flowers in my stash along with the trim that I put around the outside edge here <clears throat> was all in my stash. So this is my fully finished um, piece. 
and um oh the the pink that i used i had to change and the pink in the tree i had to change that because it wasn't showing up on this fabric the the one that was suggested by the designer it was it was blending in too much with the fabric so um on the tree there the pink that i had to use is um a little bit darker and then i used my own um choice of pink on that but yeah that is my fully finished for this and it it took me it's a beautiful pattern like i said i looked and looked online um to try to find it and couldn't it was a freebie from several years ago and it only took me two days to stitch this from start to finish. So, there we go. Very nice. Now, on to whips. Um, in my last video, I was working on Autumn by the Cross... The... Um, Cross-Eyed Cricket, yeah. <laughs> it is uh, for my daughter. And I I really, I wasn't sure if I should show you or not because basically from the last time that I showed this, I only got like maybe one more string stitched because... Um, that afternoon, my husband needed some help with something, and so I had to set this down and really not not work on it much since the last time you saw it. Then my next project, um, the first week of April, I went out to North Carolina to visit my son and granddaughter out there. I decided I wanted to take an easy project, something that wasn't too hard to see, where I didn't need a, my magnifying light and that kind of thing. So I decided to use, wow, words are hard today again, I guess. I decided to choose this Laurel Birch by Mill Hill Kits. It is called The Hummingbird and... It came with, it came, obviously it came kitted. So it came with this green um, linen. And I did not want to do this design on the green linen. I wanted it to stand out more. So I was able to, on Amazon, find this black perforated paper. And I decided to stitch this on the black. I think it will make those colors pop like crazy. Those colors are going to stand out on that black like you wouldn't believe. So this is the start I got. Of course, um, I didn't get too far because there was a lot of playing. My granddaughter is two and a half years old, so there was a lot of playing and going outside and running around and just enjoying my time with her. But I did get um, this amount of stitching done on this particular project. And I'm very, very pleased with the coverage of these colors and how it's standing out on this black. Whoopsies. So that is whip number two. And all of my Mill Hill kits, as I'm working on them, live in this bag. It's a, um, it's so Emma bag that I stitched on. And that's where my Mill Hill kits live. I always have a Mill Hill kit um, in the process. The next one was, so the seventh, when I came home, I flew home, actually I flew home on the sixth and then I was home on the seventh, but 
that was a long trip. Um, nonstop from coast to coast makes for a long trip, and I was really tired. So the 7th, I didn't work on my birthday sal at all. But this is my birthday, one of my birthday sals, American Sampler by J Designs. She is Julie in Running with, Stiz Running with Scissors, Stitching with Jane and Julie. This is her design. It's a beautiful design. I just fell in love with it. I had hoped to maybe finish it in this rotation, but it just wasn't meant to be. I didn't, I wasn't thinking about how um, dense or how much stitching there actually was. Plus, there were a couple places in the border around the A that I was working on that I w didn't pay attention to and had to frog them out. So, I didn't get it completely done, but I did finish the center section. And this is it. And now all I have is this bottom section down here. And um, I've told you in previous videos that I am not going to put the alphabets down there. I'm going to bring this farther across. I'm going to put the keys there and then I, I may find, I don't know what else, maybe the outline of an eagle or something to put in the center there. But I'll figure it out on my next rotation and then hopefully at that time I will have this one finished and I can move on to my second uh, Sal uh, project for the year. And this is my, <clears throat> for my 60th year, I am stitching from the 7th to the 10th of each month because my birthday is on 7-10. And um, every month for those four days, I stitch on a patriotic uh, piece because I have several that I really, really want to get going on and get finished and um, this was the perfect time. So I in the comments or in the description box below, I will uh, put the sal up. It is um, 60 is only a number. But um, if you want to uh, join along with that, um, that would be great. I would love to see a lot of patriotic stitching and you can tag me in it and put the hashtag um, that is in the description box along with it and we're all that would that would be fun. Uh, the next one is I am really working hard on getting the granddaughter that I went and visited. This is her. <laughs> birth um sampler that um I expand I I am putting together all of my own um idea and it is um a sampler with Stony Creek baby animals and if I can't find a Stony Creek design that will fit for each letter then I look on in my own stash of patterns or on the internet and find something to um, match with that alphabet because Stony Creek did not have enough baby animals to do the full A through Z. Uh, the last time you saw this, I had half, let me get it up here. I had half of the rooster done and I finished him and I got the skunk completed. So that was a good week's worth of work. And now I just have two more, two more um, rows across here and I'll be finished. And I really want to do get this done before her 
oops, things are falling all over the place. I really want to get this done before her uh, third birthday, which will be in October. So um, this is the piece. And I'm not sure how well that's showing. If you can see the entire thing, hopefully. And I'll try to put a picture of it um, when I do my editing. So that is um, whip number one, two, three, four. And the last one. Oh, and it lives in this this bag. You've seen it before if you've seen any of my videos. What I was working on this week, um, I brought out its nice snowflakes. Is that better? Yeah, I think you can see it better there. Filigram. I... I don't know anything about this designer. This was a pattern that was gifted to me from a friend because she knows how much I like snowmen. I collect them. And uh, it's just, it's very sweet. It is on, whoops, excuse me. Oh, I'm not telling you the sizes of the, or the name of the fabric, am I? Oh. Shoot. Okay, so the cross-eyed cricket is done on 32 count gingerbread Lugana. Uh, the Mill Hill kit I did. The American sampler is done on 16 count pale baby blue. The baby Afghan is uh I was gifted, well, I was given a lady's uh stash when she stopped uh cross stitching several years ago and this was in the haul that she uh gave to me and it was um mcg textiles baby afghan in the 18 count size um it's a very soft uh afghan um, fabric so you, when you're stitching on it you can't pull your stitches too tight or you'll warp it way out of alignment so you got to be really careful with um stitching on that and now this one is okay sorry i'll don't know what's going on with me but this is 16 count hazy gray i bought this material on etsy from a seller there it's only um Printed on one side, but it's a beautiful, beautiful uh, modeled gray that works really well with this um, snowman design. And the pat and you saw the pattern. I gave you the 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 pattern. I have changed some of the um, suggested uh threads um the white is called grit the the darker of the reds the the outside of the heart and the darker portion of the red on here is cayenne and the black is coal the others are all dmc uh, colors and um, I've I'll again I'll put a picture in so that you can see where I was when I before I started this one is gonna have to share its week with the Sal that Helen D and Aaron Elizabeth Designs and Cobweb Corners are all hosting. They are doing, I don't know, you might have heard of this or you may not have, but they're doing a Sal Bee Farm. And today is the day to, that they chose, that Helen chose to start this Sal. 
Um, I, I'm off on my dates because I thought today was the 22nd. I was thinking that I had one more day on the snowman, but I looked when I started um, filming and realized today is the 23rd. So I had to get all of my stuff out and ready. So what I am, I am not stitching it on the, the suggested colors. I am doing my own. Um, excuse me. <laughs> I've got all this information written in different areas. So it's the B Farm SAL. This is 16 count gold rush, opal gold, gold rush, and it was a be stitch me fabric. I'm going to stitch it on there. I am going to use some of the suggested colors, but not all that many. I'm taking some liberties with uh, creativity. Um, the two, the flowers that are in here, I am not a purple person. So I am changing the colors of the flowers and at one color, the, the lighter color is this classic color works Belle Soie. It's called watermelon. And the other one is grapefruit by Weeks Dye Works. I've got all of these over dyed threads and I, I keep buying more of them but I'm not using them like I should. So in things like this, when I'm changing things, the first thing I'm doing is going into my um, over dyed floss and seeing if there's something that will work alongside of, or if I want it for the changes that I want to make. Also, this um, Gentle Arts Sunflower I am going to use that for the beehive, the beehive here. And then this, I've got a bunch of these um, old DMCs. It's DMC 108. And I'm going to use this for the bee. So I think they'll stand out very good on this gold fabric, or at least I'm hoping they will. And then the rest of the colors, I am using the suggested DMC from, from Erin Elizabeth. But um, that's what I'm doing for that. And it starts today. So while um, I'm trying to get this edited and uploaded, I'll be starting my B Sal. And I will, I will, uh, what you need to do, I think the best way for you to get the information about the sal is to go over to Helen D's site. She, I, when I was getting my stuff together, I was watching her newest video, which just came out today. She talks about all of the information. She has all of the hashtags and all that kind of stuff. So go over to her, um, Floss Tube channel and get all the good information from her. And then that way I won't be giving you false information. And this is going to be the bag that it lives in while I'm doing it. And I think it's very appropriate. It's so I have decided to re-film this section of my video because it just was not working. When I went to edit it, it just sounded terrible and I didn't like how it was. So I came back, reset up my camera, and I am going to do this section over so that I'm not stumbling all over myself like I was in the first video. This is my name dropping section. I do it to encourage you to go and find these floss tubers or just give them credit for some of the milestones that they have reached since my last video. So we're going to start with the Floss Boss and Cousins. They have been doing their videos for one year. 
and they have reached the 6,000 subscriber milestone. Uh, these girl ladies are um, very funny. They have some beautiful work that they've done, and they're really good storytellers and just a fun video to watch. They also are, are great enablers, as all floss tubers are, with their haul and their patterns and so forth. So give them a look and see if you like them. Running with Scissors, Stitching with Jane and Julie. They are the reason that I'm on Floss Tube. Uh, they are the reason why I watch Floss Tube. Their content is beautiful. Their stitching is beautiful. But Julie does some finishing that is just outstanding over the top. She really can find the right embellishments, the, the perfect style to do things in, and she's just a fabulous, fabulous uh, finisher. And they they make you laugh. They they make you want to sit on the in their uh, room with them and have a good laugh and do some stitching and just enjoy the day. So running with scissors, stitching with Jane and Julie. Cross my stitches. Uh, the lady's name is Jackie. She has reached the 4,000. Oh, Jane and Julie. I'm sorry. They reached 8,000 subscribers. This one, Jackie from Cross My Stitches, she has reached 4,000 subscribers. The Daybreak Stitchers, Stitcher, her name is Jerica, and she has reached 500 subscribers. She's a new floss tuber. I don't remember how many videos she has out, but I would say 10 or 12 maybe. But she does she does larger projects uh, for the most part, and they're beautifully stitched, and they're very fun to watch. Uh, a new floss tuber, but she has already reached a great milestone. Um, the channel is the Crow River Stitcher, and her name is Sheila. She has only done three videos and has already reached 2,000 subscribers, which is just fabulous. Um, it's really inspiring to see a new floss tuber uh, shooting up with subscribers so quickly. So go give her a look. Um, she's also a crocheter and a quilter, so you'll get more than just cross-stitching on her videos. Um, she's, like I said, she's very new. So this next group of uh, stitchers that I, oh, one other one is Two Needles Pulling Thread. They me reached, I believe, 8,000 subscribers. It's uh, Kathy and Missy. They are sister-in-laws, and they're up in the main area. They just had a retreat. It was called the Library Stitchers Retreat, and they were part of the group that got it um, organized and um, helped with whatever needed to be done for that retreat. So... Now, the next group of stitchers are new to me. They're not new on floss tubes necessarily, but they're new to me. So um, I'm going to give you their names in case you haven't seen them uh, as I have it. B&E Stitchery. This is a mother-daughter team. Brandy and Emma. They also are part, were part of the Library Stitchers Retreat, and I found them through Missy and Kathy. Loose Thread Stitchers, they're uh, friends that have been, uh, they've got 24 episodes that they have produced, and they're just fun to watch. I've only seen a few of their videos, but they are, they're, they're a happy couple of uh, ladies that make you, you want to smile. The two bay, yeah, the two bay stitchers, 
These ladies are from Canada. They um, are just friends. I don't think they have any family relationship. Um, I just found them, so I don't know a whole lot about them. But they were very fun to watch, and it was interesting, uh, the things that they were stitching. So give them a look. And then Sun City Stitchers, I believe they're from Florida. I'm not absolutely positive. I've only seen a couple of their videos, so I'm going to have to do a little more research into where they're from and that kind of thing. But they are sisters, Carlene and Mar Marlene. Yes, Carlene and Marlene. Um, I believe they both were teachers at one time. I know one of the sisters is a tutor, so she tutors students um, when she's not stitching, but they, they do a lot of showing past uh, projects that they've fully finished, and some of them are older, and you can tell they're a little dated, but they're still really well done and they're they're fun to watch so those are all new to me the next group are just two floss tubes that i've been watching all along but i think it they're worth giving um some information out about just in case you haven't seen them uh most of them are pretty popular and pretty well known but just in case if you're a newbie handmade by sarah w she is in alabama Sarah's Stitchery, um, oh, where is she from? Ohio? Maybe? Not sure. I can't remember, but uh, she's had quite a few. She used to do it with a friend of hers, and now she's on her own because they just had uh, conflicts in trying to get together to do videos, so she's on her own. But she's been doing it for quite a while, and she hosts and participates in a lot of sales. Sal's are stitch along or start along uh, where you stitch the same pattern or a similar pattern um, and show each other progress. Linen and scraps, they are down in Texas. Uh, two ladies that are friends. They do cross stitching, but they also do um, scrapbooking. And um, I also think one of them Kathy and Molly are their names. Um, I believe, is it Kathy? All right, anyway, one of them I think does some quilting also. Lost Our Needles, this is another mother-daughter team. Uh, Amy and Allie. Um, Amy is the mom, she's been stitching for a while. Allie is the daughter. She's a teacher in the Phoenix area, Phoenix, Arizona, and she is a new stitcher. So it's fun to watch them and for her to kind of discover new things about stitching that she didn't know before and the, the process that she goes through to do her stitching and learn the things and learn how to finish and all that kind of stuff. And they're, they're real fun to watch. The Sable Stitchers. Sable stands for Stash Acquisition Beyond Life Expectancy. Uh, these ladies are Roberta and Linny. They, um, they do some really, really nice work. Um, it's always fun to see what they bring out and show you. Um, they also, Roberta has, I believe it's a website. <clears throat> but she compiles information about different retreats all over the country for the year. And she gives out that information so that you can go and get in contact with some of these different retreats and maybe um, find some place close or some place new that you want to discover that... Um, has a retreat going on at, a, at different times throughout the year and she compiles that and puts it together with contact information so that you can um, find them. They also just recently started doing Zoom calls 
and they choose 10 uh, viewers that uh, respond to their videos. They, they, it's just like a giveaway that some of these other um, floss tubes have, but their giveaway, not the only thing that they give away, but one of their giveaways is they pick 10 people and then you you respond to them and Roberta sends you a code with the time, date, and information as how to get on the Zoom so that you can talk with them and enjoy stitching together. And I think that's really a fun idea. One of these times I'm going to be available during the, the time that they set aside and I hope to be able to uh, Zoom with them sometime soon. Two Tall Stitchers, this is another mother-daughter team, uh, Carol and Jennifer. Not only are they cross-stitchers, but they're also wonderful, fabulous, whatever other word you can think of, quilters. And behind them in their floss tubes, every time they come on, they have a quilt that either the mom or the daughter have have put together. And this particular, the last video that they just did, there was a quilt that had been given to them from their, her great grandmother. And it was, it was beautiful. And it was an heirloom that was being passed down from the oldest daughter to the oldest daughter to the, you know, on down the line so that this quilt would be kept within the family and cherished. And it's, it's really a, a cool thing that they have. Uh, the Stitching Owl is Karen. She is from Canada. She's not been doing a whole lot of, uh, I believe she's been doing it maybe for a year. I'm not sure. But uh, she loves to join in with different challenges or sals or any of those kind of things. And she also does what she calls send a smile. And she will stitch a small motif of some sort and turn it into an ornament or a pillow or whatever. And then she sends them to just random people that she chooses to try to send a smile to. And it's just really, really nice. It's not something that she has to do. She just does it to bring joy to other stitchers. And uh, I received one at Christmas time. It was a really nice little ornament. And I was so, so pleased that she had chosen to send one to me. So um, give her a look. And her stitching is really fabulous. She's got one on the go right now. It's a big piece and it looks like a stained glass owl. <coughs> Excuse me, I'm sorry. Um, but the colors in it, and she's doing it on a black fabric. The colors are just popping off there. And it's just a gorgeous uh, pattern that she's working. So go and give her a look for that. Just keep stitching. This is Pam and Stephanie. They've been going, they're on like episode 345 or something like that. They do one every week. Uh, they are associated with StitchCon. They also, uh, Stephanie works for, oh no, I'm going to forget the name of this. I'm sorry, I'll put it in the the comments if you want to know, but she's associated with a cross-stitch store there in Ohio where they live. And, um, oh, why can't I think of the name? Oh, well, I tried. <laughs> and the last one is Cross-Stitch the Globe. Uh, this is uh, two sisters, Allison and Stephanie. They do three types of videos. Uh, they do a regular floss tube where they show their work and their progress and their haul and all that kind of stuff. But then they also do um, one that is kind of meant for new stitchers. And they answer some of the questions that you might have about fabric, the size, the the 
the names that they are given and kind of tried to research a little bit about why they were given that particular name. And then they do another one where they research kits, patterns. Um, I don't know what else they've got in that line. But they go on to eBay and they research the most expensive uh, kits and patterns and that kind of thing. So they like to do research uh, for those type of um, products and make a video. So you pretty much get once a week from them you get a video some are a little longer some are a little shorter but they're they're fun to watch also if you wouldn't mind could you like subscribe and um share my video so that i can get some more viewers and can get a larger audience to share my stitching with and the last thing i'm going to do today is if I can find it, where is my, oh, it's right here. <laughs> it's right here in front of me. I was looking for my haul and I, there's not very much of it. So it's, it's just sitting right here. So, um, I was at Target <clears throat> recently and you know how you go in the door and they have all these uh, dollar, one dollar things, three dollar things. Well, these boxes were there for a dollar. And for me, they are absolutely perfect because my bobbins fit in here. Just awesome. And... um so I got several of these to use for kitting up different projects and having them in my, my uh, floss bags. I also needed some, I'm being noisy here, that's kind of rude, some beads for um, the just finishing different things. So I got this, um, these different colored beads. It was a, a set of, I believe there's 25 or 30 in there. Uh, and it, it's an, it was an Amazon purchase. And also on Amazon, I found these super adorable cow charms. And I have a couple of projects that I want, I need, um, cows for the finishing so i found them and i got those for my stash also for the finish on my um bee farm <laughs> she's louise i got these now i don't know if i'll use both if i'll only use one or what but they were so cute that I couldn't resist either one of them they were at Michael's and they're just they're super cute so um, I'm hoping that at one or maybe both of them will be part of the fully finish for my bee farm um, pattern and then, come on, I'm sorry, I'm distracted here, but I'm trying to get this. I am on what I am calling a no-buy year. And I haven't done super good at it. There have been a few things where I've fallen off the wagon and went and bought. But I'm the one that imposed the, the rules so I can break them if I want to. <laughs> This I did not buy. This is a free pattern on Instagram. It is by Boomerang Stitches. She does have an Etsy shop, but this is not in her Etsy shop. This is on her Instagram uh, page. So if you would like, and it's just so, it's so cute. 
And it comes in two versions. It can say bird heard, or there's another one that she has done which says bird nerd. Um, either or. I am going to kit this up here in the next couple weeks and get going on that because I just can't resist it. It's too cute. And uh, I'll, be, I'll be doing that. But this was a free pattern. So if you're interested in this one, go on to Instagram and give her a look because that's the only place that you can get it as far as I'm, I know as of right now. Now, I signed up for a pattern of the month in December with Shannon Christine Designs, and it's the uh, Christmas mug one. And so far, we have five. They're really one pattern per month release, and they are $8 per pattern. And she gives you, uh, you can do it in a single design, and which would have another border outside the one that's right here. And the extra border she it gives to you free it, when you sign up for her um, deer mugs, or her Christmas mugs, I'm sorry. So the first one was deer. And then Santa. Come on. Come on. And then my printer didn't print very well, but there is Penguin. Christmas tree. And the one that came out this month was gingerbread. So I am not going to start these until I have the all 12 designs because I am going to arrange them in a different way than what they're coming out. So I need to wait until the last um, pattern comes out so that I can set them up in, in the way I want them to go. But these are going to be really fun to do um, when I get them all. And that is probably going to be a end of the year start for me um, going into next year. So that's my uh, floss tube for this time. Uh, I am going to a retreat. I will take pictures and um, get that in my next video. Be kind to each other. Be polite. Um, treat each other with the respect you would want to be treated with. Um, enjoy your stitching. I hope you have a fabulous uh, afternoon. If you're able to pick up your needle and thread, that will make the day just a little bit brighter. And um, see you next time. Thank you.